Hi, this is Shri Priya. I'm a research scholar in IIT Madras. I'm going to explain corrosion related uh, testing. How to do first uh, corrosion is a major deterioration mechanism in most of the uh, structures. So we need to understand the corrosion mechanism and the materials which are used whether it uh, is uh, corrosion resistant or not. For that we have to test with uh, advanced techniques such as LPR, EIS. So I am going to explain how to do the testing when these techniques have to be employed. First I will explain the instrumentation and next I will go uh, explain the corrosion accessories that are required for the experiment. This is a potential stat and this is a frequency response analyzer. This potential stat is capable of measuring voltage in the test specimen. This is uh, required for uh, doing uh, conducting experiments such as uh, linear polarization resistance, cyclic voltammetry, etc. And frequency response analyzer is capable of transmitting waves and record the response uh, signal. So this is uh, used for electrochemical impedance spectroscopy. This instrument should be coupled with this to do the experiment. But nowadays we have uh, inbuilt FRA in potential stat itself. Uh, so, we can have a single instrument which is capable of doing both the experiments. So, moving on to the uh, corrosion cell, this is a corrosion cell, it is, has three electrodes. First is the reference electrode, I have used a saturated uh, calomel electrode, here you can see this is the saturated calomel electrode and then we have a nichrome mesh, this is the counter electrode. When we choose the counter electrode, it should be corrosion resistant because we do not want a response from the counter electrode to affect the uh, reading. Then the working electrode that is the test specimen is connected here. This is a, all put it in a beaker, the whole setup forms the corrosion cell. Here I have used a lollipop specimen. This is the type of specimen. Here a steel rod is embedded in mortar. It is cast with this uh, kind of uh, uh, plastic mold and uh, after 24 hours it is demolded and the specimen is prepared. Now uh, in this experiment I have uh, subjected the specimen to chlorides. Depending on your specimen and the type of exposure condition you want, you can change uh, the condition of the uh, testing. So first I will explain uh, linear polarization resistance technique. As corrosion uh, is an equilibrium process, we cannot directly measure the corrosion rate from the test specimen. So what we have to do is, we have to measure the inherent potential of the test specimen and slightly disturb the specimen uh, by applying a small voltage and record the response back. So in linear polarization resistance, we apply a DC voltage. We measure the OCP first, that is the inherent potential of the specimen and then we apply a small voltage plus or minus 10 millivolt over the uh, OCP and then record the response. Now I will show how to do the testing with the help of the software that comes with that instrument. This is the Corver software that comes with the instrument. Here I have chosen open circuit, impedance and uh, polarization resistance. Open circuit is the uh, inherent potential of the specimen. And then we do a EAS test because EAS is a AC signal, it does not uh, uh, affect the specimen uh, much. And then we do a polarization resistance because we need to uh, have some time lag to come back to the inherent potential in polarization resistance. So we order the uh, testing in this sequence and we usually do open circuit potential for 60 to 120 seconds. Uh, we will start the experiment now. So the first. Uh, the open circuit potential is measured. So it will go on for uh, uh, 120 seconds. If uh, you can see there are 4 digits in this, so it is more or less very stable. So when you have a stable OCP, our measurements uh, will get better in uh, LPR and EAS uh, measurements. Now the experiment is over, the next experiment is impedance spectroscopy. This is the typical uh, EAS curve that is obtained from the 
uh, test specimen. First plot shows the Nyquist plot where we have uh, Z dash and Z double dash. Uh, these are uh, real and uh, imaginary impedance and then we have um, second graph the two graphs both of them together called as Bode plot. Here we have uh, uh, modulus of uh, Z was a uh, frequency and uh, second is uh, phase angle that we get from the specimen. So we have to use a equivalent circuit to fit the spectra and get the polarization resistance. This equivalent circuit depends on the type of specimen. For example, we cannot use the same equivalent circuit for a coated steel and an uncoated steel. We have to use depending on the type of the test specimen and the physical reactions that is going on. Second, I will show you now uh, the linear polarization resistance. Now this experiment is over. Uh, we move on to the next experiment, linear polarization resistance. Now I will start the polarization resistance uh, experiment. From the OCP measured, there will be a DC potential that is applied plus or minus 10 millivolt and then we will get a curve that is a, a E versus I curve. The curve is obtained, we will measure the slope of the curve near to the OCP that will give the polarization resistance of the steel. When this curve crosses, this is the near to the open circuit potential, what we measured initially. So we want to get the slope near to this point. So once the uh, experiment is over, we will get a slope of this curve, then take that as a polarization resistance value. Now we are done with the measurement of polarization resistance with this. Uh, equipments. We need to do repeated uh, measurement of uh, polarization resistance to get to know the chloride threshold. Chloride threshold is the minimum amount of chlorides that are required to uh, initiate corrosion. You can see in this graph that 1 by Rp is plotted against uh, the exposure days. You can see there are ups and downs in the reading. It is because the corrosion process is a dynamic process and the ongoing corrosion may uh, influence the reading. Uh, so we have to have a statistical analysis. You can see that the stable data has been marked. So we do subject it to some statistical analysis of the mean and then uh, when it crosses some certain value that is mu plus 3 sigma, then we consider the specimen to be initiated. Once we identify the initiation that happened in the specimen, we have to uh, open the specimen and collect some powder from the interface and with the help of uh, chloride uh, sensing probe, we can find the amount of chloride that has been at the interface. This amount of chloride is reported as chloride threshold value. Why do we need this threshold value? Because lot of materials are available in the market. So to enhance the service life that is without any repair. A durable structure if you want to have, we need to have materials which are corrosion resistant and many materials are coming to the market claiming it uh, to be durable. To measure whether it is really durable or not, we need to do this kind of testing and find the chloride threshold and then compare it with other materials that are available and choose the materials wisely. With this, we have come to the end of the experiment. Thank you for watching.